Hello and welcome to today's lab. So within your VCL session, go ahead and navigate to the Blackboard course web page for Government 300. And along the left-hand menu, choose Data. And then under the full versions of the Pollock data, choose the American National Election Study of 2008. And go ahead and click on this. And you'll be prompted within your VCL session to either open or save the data set. Click Open. And this will automatically open a uh, session of SPSS. All right. So today we'll be talking about a new technique of statistical analysis called the t-test, or the student's t-test. The t-test is a comparison of means test for interval or ratio dependent variables and dichotomous independent variables. For instance, what if we wanted to see if gender influences income level? Since income level, in this case, would be an interval level of measurement, and gender is dichotomous, a t-test would be the appropriate method for testing whether the difference in sample means is statistically significant. So similar to the chi-square statistic, a t-test will tell us whether the difference in means observed in the sample exists in the population and with what degree of certainty. So let's get started. We've already opened up the NES 2008 data set, so let's decide on our variables. Let's use a feeling thermometer for the candidate for then candidate Obama as our dependent variable. And remember that our dependent variable needs to be interval or ratio. So why do we choose this variable? Let's run a frequency table and discuss why. So along the top menu, go to Analyze and choose Descriptive Statistics and then Frequencies. And within the variable pane, right click and display variable names and then sort alphabetically. This makes it a lot easier to navigate through your variable names. So if you have variable names selected, you can type O, and that'll bring you down to Obama, the Obama thermometer, or you can just scroll down through all your variable names. Now select the Obama thermometer into the variable pane, that's your dependent variable, and click OK. So you'll notice that this variable is a scale from 0 to 100 degrees, indicating it's at the ratio level of measurement. For a t-test, we're looking for ratio or interval dependent variables and dichotomous independent variables. So go ahead and close out of this output. And let's decide on an independent variable. Let's use gender. So recall that a dichotomous variable will have two categories, conceptualized as a success condition and lack of a success condition. So in this case, male and not male, or female and not female. So suppose we hypothesize the following. On average, women rate Obama higher on the feeling thermometer than do men. So here we're seeking to understand variation in the Obama feeling thermometer when we know the gender. All right, so let's get a picture of the two means for these subsamples. Go to Analyze, Compare Means, and slide directly over and just click on Means. And sort your variables. And select the Obama thermometer. And you want to place this in your dependent list. and select gender, place this in your independent list, and click OK. Now in the output window, it appears that men and women do differ in their mean scores for the president, as you can see under the report here, that males on average rate Obama 56.27, whereas females rate Obama 59.17. But importantly, we do not know if this difference in our sample also exists in the population. And this is why we need the t-test. So recall that a t-test will give us the ability to infer from the sample means to the population means and with what degree of certainty. So let's go ahead and run the t-test. 
So minimize out of the, or minimize the output window here. And again, go up to analyze and compare means. And this time choose independent samples t-test. And sort your variables again. and select the Obama thermometer and place that into the test variable pane and select your independent variable gender and place that into the group grouping variable pane. So at this point you'll notice that SPSS asks us to define categories of the IV. This is an important step. So SPSS is asking you to confirm how the two categories of your independent variable are coded or labeled. For instance, they may be coded 0 and 1, or they may be coded 1 and 2. In this case, our two categories of gender are coded as 1 and 2. So click on Define Groups and make sure use specified values is selected. And then under group one, simply put one. And under group two, put two. Click continue. So the coding of your categories is also important because SPSS will take the mean of the first group and subtract from it the mean of the second group, thus resulting in a negative or positive T statistic. In this case, female is group two and male is groups, group one. So if females were to rate Obama higher, we would expect a negative T statistic. And remember that the T test stati statistic is interpreted in absolute terms as distance between the two means. So go ahead and click on OK to run the t-test. And then navigate down to the results and the output here. So you'll notice that we get a negative t-value, just as we discussed, of negative 2.432. That simply means that our second group's mean is higher than the first, which is what we observed earlier. Females rate Obama higher than do males. And we get a degree of freedom of 2,301. So recall from Professor Daigle's lecture videos that once we calculate our t-statistic, we look it up on a table of critical values to get the p-value, or the probability of making a type 1 error. When we use SPSS, conveniently, we actually don't need to consult a table of critical values. SPSS will provide our p-value for us in the output. So in the output, note the significant two-tailed column. And the value here is 0 0.015. And you're going to look at the first figure here under equal variances assumed. Now recall what a p-value is. So one minus our p-value will, will give us our confidence level. Thus we are 98.5% confident that the population means in this case are different, or we would say that we are more than 95% confident that the difference in means that we observe in our sample exists in the population. So to put it all together, we can state that with a p-value of 0.015, we can reject the null hypothesis and claim statistical support for a research hypothesis that, on average, women rate Obama higher on the feeling thermometer than do men. We are more than 95% confident that women are more likely on average to rate Obama higher than our men. Our next lab video will feature ANOVA, or analysis of variance. Before moving on to the next lab video, be sure to watch the lecture videos on ANOVA.